All right, can I have a combi oven with air 0760, which is a motor error? So as soon as we go and fire up, we're getting the air immediately in less than one second. All right, so let's pull up a service manual and see what's going on. All right, so we got our service manual here. So it's saying the control board A1 does not receive any response via the CAN bus cable from the fan motor. There's an error in either the safety circuit or the fan area. Perfect, so let's move down to the next step. All right, locating errors. So it's telling us it's either the uh, safety circuit or the fan area. So first step is switch on the unit and measure voltage at the main contactor Q1, terminals A1 and A2. The main contactor must be energized. All right, so let's check our visual cues here. So our contactor is pulled in. So based on that, we don't need to test A1 and A2 off this Q1 contactor. We know there's power there. All right, so let's just pull up a schematic really quickly and just uh, kind of break down what they're asking to do there and how we can troubleshoot without even using the meter in this case. So it's saying the Q1 coil A1, A2 which is this guy right here, A1, A2. It wants to know if there's power here. All right, so if we come through our circuit, the A2 side is a straight shot. Okay, we have nothing in line. So what it's more concerned about is this A1 side. So this A1 side is coming right off of the board up here, off pin two. And then we have a thermal switch on the PCB, which is uh, basically switch to make sure our electrical compartment is not overheating. It wants to make sure this switch is in the closed position. And then we come down to our high limit for our cabinet. Okay, so that's the high limit to make sure we're not overheating the cabinet so we don't have any fires or anything like that. It wants to make sure that's closed. And then we come right to our A1 circuit right here and complete our circuit to our coil. So instead of testing all these points, A1, A2, and testing all these limits, all you have to do is check to see if the contactor's pulling in. If the contactor's pulling in, we know that that Q1 coil, A1, A2, is getting power. Okay, so this is just a way to troubleshoot this a lot more quickly. Look for your visual signs. All right, so next one, no voltage present. We have voltage present. So then it's saying go to troubleshoot the fan. So we're going to come all the way down to here. So first step it's asking us to do is uh, check supply voltage at X1. So if we scroll up here, X1 is going to be this connector here. So that's our incoming power, which we're looking for 230. In this case, we're looking for 208. So we're going to be checking this connector right here. All right, so let's go ahead and test power on this X1 connector. We have 208 in, so that's good. Let's move to the next step. All right, so correct power at X1. So now the next step would be to go check voltage at connector X2. So X2 is right here. These are the readings we're looking for. 1 to 2, 320 volts DC. 2 to 3, 15 volts DC. And it's going to be this connector right here. So let's pull up the schematic here just so we can follow along to all of our testing. So we just checked for power at X1 here. So that means this F1 6 amp fuse is good. This F1.1 6 amp fuse is good. Okay. So now the next test point is going to be X2. So let's go check our DC voltage, see what's going on. Alright, so we're going to go on pins 1 to 2 here on this X2 connector. We're getting 289 volts DC. That's good. We're within the range. Let's go to pins 2 and 3 now. And we're getting 16 volts DC, so we're also within the range. Alright, so we had power on X2, so that means we're sending correct power to this board on pins one, two, and three here. Okay, correct DC voltage. 
So we have power at the load, the load is not working. So what does that mean? The motor's bad. So let's go ahead, change this motor out. All right, so let's go ahead here and change this motor out. So first thing we're gonna do is get this blower wheel off. So first thing I'm gonna do is just back this nut off. You just wanna back it off like literally one or two threads. You don't wanna bend this bolt. Sometimes this blower wheel can be super stubborn to come off. Get our pulley puller on there, get it on there nice and tight. Make sure it's centered. So yeah, I like to use this, this three jaw, three claw pulley puller. Make sure it's nice and centered, make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, this does use a tapered shaft, so it is a little bit hard to get this blower wheel off, but it's all good. Let's put some heat on there, let it do its magic. And uh, we'll get this guy off. Obviously you want to heat the hub, not the shaft, because you're trying to expand the hub and not the shaft. Okay, so, all right, so there's two last things I want to check here on this unit once we're done changing the motor. This is an AC voltage motor, but we're getting DC voltage. So I just want to figure out why that's happening. And then the second thing is, as soon as we turned on the heating cycle, we got the error code. So I want to figure out how this motor's logging the error immediately. All right, so motor's change. So we come in, we get power on X1. We're converting through this board to DC voltage on the X2, and then it's coming up to the motor board, and these gray wires is where we're gonna convert everything to AC voltage, and then we're gonna change the frequency on these three wires right here. And that's how we're changing DC voltage to AC voltage. All right, so let's just show that on the schematic. That's kind of confusing what I was talking about. So we come in here, we have AC voltage. Okay, then we have a little inverter board here. And then we go to DC voltage. Okay, so now we're going to come in with our DC voltage into our motor. So that was the fit five pin connector. Okay, so inside the motor, we had a two gray wires, okay? So we'll just draw them like that. And then we had those three other wires on that other pin connector. So we'll just draw them as blue wires. Something like that, okay? So on this connection here, the two gray wires, okay, this is our AC voltage, okay, and then on our three pin connector, this is going to be our, we're changing our frequency, so we're using something called PWM or pulse width modulation, so what we're doing is we're taking a DC signal, okay, we're changing the frequency of it. And inside this board here, we have some switches. So we'll have four or six switches, and those switches will open and close. So just say we have four switches. One, okay, one and two will be closed, three and four will be open. And then a second later, one and two will open, three and four will close. What does that gives us is a 100 degree sine wave, okay? So we've now made AC voltage based on changing the frequency. So we're changing the frequency on here, and that's taking this and changing it into AC voltage. So the gray wires is where we're gonna be checking our AC voltage. And that's how we're going from DC to AC, from changing the hertz or frequency through pulse width modulation. All right, so as you can see on the motor here, 110 volts to 240 volts at 4.85 amps and 2.2 amps. So let's get everything tested out here. So here's the two gray wires I was talking about. Let's check our voltage. We're getting 67 volts AC. So we're getting AC voltage to the motor. And let's go see what kind of amperage we're drawing here. So we'll let our Amper settle down will be around 1.15 amps. All right, so let's try to make sense of this. So the rating plate was showing 2.2 amps. So we're obviously getting well below that. We're at 1.15. So we had 67 volts, okay? 
of 110 volts. So 110 volts was the rating for 2.2. So let's go see what we get for that. So 67 divided by 110 gives us 60.9. And now we're going to multiply that by what our rating was, which was 2.2 .2 amps. So let's go do that. So times 2.2. .2, that gives us 1.34 amps. And we were getting 1.15 amps. So we're, we're within the range. Um, the motor's doing what it should be. Um, so we're all good here. Now the last thing I want to check that was kind of bothering me was as soon as I started the heat cycle the uh, the error message was coming up. The motor doesn't start right away. There's a two three second delay. So let's, let's go jump into that and let's see if we can figure out how the unit knows or how the board knows that the motor's running right at startup. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and close the door and let's see if we can figure out what it does at startup. All right. See how there was a delay there? So it knew right away. So let me go back and open and close this door one more time. So let's wait for the motor to stop here. And if you watch very closely, watch what it's going to do. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, then start up. Okay, so let's watch that on the amp draw. So as we're going, we're gonna go left, right, left, right, left, right. All right, so as you can see at startup, the motor goes clockwise to counterclockwise back and forth three, four, five, six times. So that's how we're able to log the error exactly at startup, okay? So if it doesn't sense any amperage at startup and it doesn't sense it going clockwise and counterclockwise, that's how we can log it right at startup, okay? So I obviously went super deep into this issue. Uh, there's a couple things I didn't understand. I didn't understand how I was logging the error. So at first I thought it was going to be a bad board for sure because I'm thinking it has to wait a couple seconds for the for the motor to start spinning for it to to sense the amperage. But what it's doing as we saw there is as soon as you close that door, it's going left right left right left right. Okay? Now the second thing that I went into pretty crazy detail in was how are we getting DC voltage to run this AC voltage motor? Okay? So I ended up taking the motor part as you saw and took the covers off and Basically, we got an inverter board, so which is going AC to DC, and then through pulse width modulation, we're changing the frequency, which is changing the sine wave to 120 degrees. And once we do that, we're actually creating alternate current. So that's what's happening there. So that's how we're running an AC voltage motor off of DC voltage.